These are my favorite episodes of OKKO in season one. Hope you enjoy this new curb log. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> Good. Every, every time I'm just expecting. All right. So how many hundreds of people have just closed the window at this point? Uh, so for those of you who haven't been following along with everything I've been doing lately, uh, I'm currently in the middle of taking a little break from uh, doing my... Uh, practically daily animation streams of the Tome RPG Kickstarter backer characters, the fully animated enemy guys and everything. And I figured uh, since I'm a little busy this weekend, I would take a, just a quick amount of time to uh, work on a, or to make a cur blog. And uh, I promised that I would make a sequel to the uh, How I Got Involved with OKKO okay, Let's Be Heroes uh, one that I did uh, last month. And so I figured... Uh, since we're almost done with season one, uh, and rather we are, uh, I guess as far as I'm concerned, all, all done with the episodes that uh, I have voiced in, uh, so I guess that's a mild spoiler to let everybody know that I'm not voicing in the last couple episodes that haven't aired yet. Nonetheless, uh, yeah, so I've got, uh, I, I figured this would be fun to do a little recounting of some stories uh, of about 10 episodes uh, that I worked on throughout season one, just happened to round up to, uh, to 10, so it's almost like a top 10 of my favorite episodes that I worked on because they are the 10 episodes that I worked on in season one. Um, now technically, uh, and for those of you who, uh, little, little preface, if you haven't listened to the, uh, KO curb law that I did, uh, earlier this month, I'll have a link to it in the description and probably at the end of the video as well, but go check that out. Uh, it kind of gives the basic backstory of, uh, what led me to being involved with the show in the first place. And I also tell a quick little story about my work on, uh, the very first session that I had, which originally was not uh, an episode, it got turned into an episode. It was the uh, Plaza Shorts one, where I played a bunch of various guys in that one. Um, so that's kind of the beginning of the story. And uh, I've, uh, as well, just so you know, uh, I'm going to be spoiling a lot of things uh, just regarding season one in general. So uh, hopefully you've watched by this point. Uh, please know that they are uh, all on the Cartoon Network website and the Cartoon Network app, uh, which you can get as long as you like, just give your cable provider or whatever. Uh, it's, you can, there's plenty of ways to check them out, and uh, there's about, I think, 45-something episodes like that, somewhere around there, uh, that are all available, like, immediately. So uh, please uh, don't listen to this if you haven't already seen the show. Uh, you know, I, I highly, highly recommend you check it out, you know, so I'll be dealing with an educated audience, hopefully, from here on out as far as uh, knowing the material, so... Anyway, okay, starting off. So after my first session where I did the uh, Plaza Shorts and I went in and I met some of the initial folks and everything, I worked with uh, Ian, who is the creator, of course, and the voice of Rad and many, many other characters, Daryl and et cetera. Uh, Toby Jones is the producer. Christy Reed, our voice director. Uh, Ashley Birch, uh, who's Enid, of course. Uh, David Herman, Mr. Gar. Uh, Jim Cummings, uh, who's Lord Boxman, was in the first episode I did, etc. The first actual episode that I did uh, was the first episode of the full series, uh, Let's Be Heroes, uh, which was a two-parter. And actually, I believe that it was... Uh, I think that we actually might have recorded it... Uh, or rather, I think that everybody else might have recorded bits of it a little bit later. I think that there might have been some uh, bits of like recording some things out of order. For those of you who don't know, uh, sometimes when recording uh, prelay series, uh, not every episode necessarily that airs uh, in a certain order is always necessarily the episode that is recorded or animated or finished in a certain order. Um, so this was intended to be the first episode. Uh, it was part one of uh, of, of two. Uh, but also, uh, for those of you who don't know, they were following along with the show already, the first, I believe, six episodes were intended to be kind of like a, a mini arc of uh, K.O.'s first week working at Gar's Bodega. So they were all kind of uh, linked together as sort of like an hour long uh, or, or so kind of sort of movie thing in a way. But uh, yeah, so... Uh, the first two uh, full-on characters that I got to be, uh, just uh, from the beginning, you know, past the little bits that I did in the, the shorts, uh, were Nick Army, uh, who has a little quick walk-on part. Uh, he's hanging out with uh, Jotha Shaolin Monk, uh, talking about, you know, bought a couple nades, etc. You know, uh, he wasn't quite a surfer back then, and I kind of pushed him a little bit further as the show went on, uh, was in there. And uh, then, of course, uh, as many people have reminded me and quoted at me at on Twitter and at a few conventions and things. Uh, this was also, of course, where I established the voice of Purd, who I'm not going to be doing in this because I'll destroy the waveform. He's just me screaming at full volume. Uh, and of course, this was where <laughs> this was where the um, uh, 
uh, the what's it called? Uh, the the do you have any gum? Scream to full volume thing started. Uh, <laughs> Purd is the character I, I've found consistently that um, has gotten the most amount of laughs. Uh, <laughs> there was. There was uh, there were, there was quite a bit of there was quite a number of moments throughout the season just in general as this little quick note where uh, whatever I had to do as per like just because it was so just like like unexpected like would catch people off guard and people would be kind of giggling in the background so it was the cheapest laugh I could always get from the rest of the cast just shouting whatever random bull crap he has to say at the time um, but uh, also uh, there was a take that I did uh, I think that there's a there's an episode coming up where. Um, He's done this again where, uh, you know, in response to whatever, uh, he goes, oh, okay. And I did a take that was like, oh, okay, which was kind of a cute reference to uh, Lucky Captain Rabbit King from that one Powerpuff Girls episode. Uh, I'm hoping that it will make it into a future one. But, yeah, that was for another time when that came up. But anyway, uh, and actually, I believe also in that session uh, at the time, uh, we were not, actually not recording everything uh, directly at Cartoon Network. We were also doing some stuff at a place called Salami Studios, uh, where they've done a whole lot of uh, animation stuff, a lot of uh, direct-to-video movies and different shows and things. So we were working there, and uh, that place is super awesome. Actually, funnily enough, that was also where I recorded for uh, uh, one of the Alpha and Omega movies that I was in, for those of you who don't know that I voiced in one of those. Uh, but also in that uh, that session in particular, I believe, uh, at the time, they were still uh, kind of in the process of releasing a lot of the um, the shorts uh, that were coming out uh, to basically promote the show, and or rather uh, at the time to promote the mobile game. Uh, long before, of course, Capybara did the uh, the full console game, but uh, yeah, at the time uh, they were there were still a bunch of shorts happening, and actually. Uh, I think that the one, yeah, the one that I, that I, I recorded this for uh, was, I believe, animated by Studio Yada. I think it was uh, the one that was called Enid's Bad Day. Uh, she's being bothered by a bunch of, like, annoying, you know, uh, customer goers. And uh, this was the first time I got to voice Neil. Uh, at the time, I actually thought that he was still going to be the annoying customer slime regenerating character that I did in the Plaza Shorts, uh, which I did the crappy Yuki no Joe impression of. <laughs> Uh, but that turned out to be a, a, a different thing entirely. It was just a little one-off thing, whatever. Uh, but with this, uh, I, I, and funnily enough, I was actually replacing uh, some audio recorded by Ian, uh, where uh, originally Neil was, he, Neil sounded like this, like he was doing this, like, Bab, I need a banana, and quite frankly, I'm appalled that you're not uh, uh, attending my order or whatever. And so I had to go in and I had to fit the exact uh, timing, but I was doing it with the new voice we were coming up with, which was, of course, this really high-pitched, like, oh, sorry about that KO kind of thing that came from that. Um, so I don't know if it was originally intended that Ian was going to play Neil. Uh, obviously, he you know plays, I think, at least like four or five different recurring guys on the show uh, in addition to Rad. Um, but, uh, yeah, I went in and, and, and did Neil for that and then... Eventually, he would show up in other episodes after that, of course. But um, in, fact, in fact, I believe he was in the next episode, which was uh, Let's Be Friends. This was also part of the initial uh, six episode sort of first week of uh, chaos working at the bodega thing, a little mini arc. Uh, this is where I established the voice of Ernesto, who was, uh, of course, one of the uh, robot henchmen of uh, Lord Boxman. Uh, this is where I got to work once again with uh, Jim Cummings. And I uh, got to play off him a lot, which has been a joy every time I get to do that. Um, often, of course, the robot characters happen to be in uh, the same episodes with, uh, with, Lord, with Lord Boxman. And uh, Ernesto seems to be the one that uh, communicates with him the most directly because I guess he's just very uh, responsible compared to the others. Uh, and this was also the establishment of um, seeing that the robot uh, Boxmore robot kids uh, were all of uh, sort of an assembly line thing where there would be multiple and they'd all have the same voice and everything, or the same actor anyway, even if there were uh, different variants of them, like the uh, special edition cowboy uh, Daryl. <laughs> um, but uh, And actually, a little fun fact, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, I know that when we did that episode, it was still very early on in production, of course, and uh, I remember when uh, Ernesto was talking to Lord Boxman about uh, a client called uh, I think that they cut it in the final episode, but originally he was talking about uh, Dr. Venomous. And I think even at that time, uh, they maybe might have not decided on what his uh, name was going to be. So I think that they had like a couple different versions of uh, what his name was going to be. It was like Dr. Venomous and like, you know, different variants of that. I think it was still Venomous, but it might have been like Professor Venomous or, you know, 
Sir Venomous or something like that. I don't know. But I, I remember recording a couple different versions of that, and then of course eventually became Doctor Venomous. But I think they might have cut it maybe as uh, if they. I'm not sure if they didn't want to tease it too early. Of course, Doctor Venomous becomes a major character later on. Um, but yeah, and then uh, actually Shannon was in this episode. Unfortunately, did not get the chance to meet Kari Walgren uh, until I think by the time I was recording for season two. Um, so I, I always kept like missing her, and of course I've you know known of Kari's work for a long time, and she's amazing as Shannon. It's like it's a great, great, great part for her. Um, but yeah, and uh, then after that, uh, the next like uh, normal episode I did uh, after the kind of initial six episode arc was uh, your everybody's sidekick. Um, this was also me beginning to realize that Purd was slowly being written into uh, a lot of episodes just to come in and scream something all the time. Uh, you know, even if it was just for like a line, he would just be around and go like, ah, and then go off and, you know, and then that would be my recurring character. And then, and then anything else after that, most of the time would either be like either Neil or Nick Army or Ernesto or like just something else in the episode. But literally there were so many times where just like, and here's Purd and here's just, he's just here. Enjoy. <laughs> Um, then, uh, of course I got to explore a little bit more with, uh, Nick Army's voice. I had a full actual scene with him and I got to meet, uh, the illustrious James, uh, Urbaniak, uh, Ur Urbaniak, the voice of Dr. Venture, uh, who is awesome. And, uh, those of you who don't know, he literally just sounds like Dr. Venture. <laughs> like that's his natural speaking voice. So he was recording for, um, Jatha Shaolin Monk at the time. And, uh, we got to have our little scene together with, uh, you know, talking about opening the pickle jar and et cetera. And then we got to come back later and uh, have our little cute scene of uh, our, our updated fashion sense and everything. Uh, other little interesting thing. Um, so I, I mentioned in the previous Curb blog uh, about getting into the show, you know, even before I was on it, when I saw the Lakewood Plaza Turbo pilot, uh, I remember there was a post with um, uh, a bunch of pictures of all the recurring characters that were mostly in the background um, but they were all, even all of the characters that, uh, you've seen in the show for the most part, all of them that were just like, that are like actual characters now, even back then, uh, they were background characters. So a lot of them were always like planned, uh, to be a thing in the first place. Um, so I remember, uh, I remember seeing like, even when I went back and I watched the Lakewood Plaza Turbo pilot, I could, oh, oh, there's, there's Nick Army and there's. Uh, you know, Mr. Logic and Dogma and all these different guys are all just kind of hanging out and Brandon and Real Magic Skeleton and all them. Uh, but I remember uh, Red Action was a character who caught my eye because I just thought her design was like so cute. And I actually drew the very first, uh, I think if you go back far enough on my Tumblr, you can find the very first piece of fan art uh, ever drawn of Red Action. Uh, I, I will take uh, illustrious uh, credit for that. Thank you very much. <laughs> but I was really excited about Red Action showing up in an episode. And of course, uh, this was, I believe, the first one where she got to speak in, if I'm remembering correctly. Oh, wait, no, no, actually, no, I'm wrong. Uh, I think that uh, the Level 100 one was the first one she got to speak in that aired. But I think that this was the first episode recorded by her voice actor, uh, Kelly Hawk, uh, who I got to meet there. And uh, I had never heard of her before. And I believe this was the first time that she had done uh, animation voiceover. And uh, it was interesting because I think she was more of a film person. She had done, like, some movies and stuff, as I had found out later. Um, but uh, it, was, it was fun because I remember when we were on break, um, she, she seemed like she was still kind of, like, like, trying to get the hang of, like, the, the finite specifics of recording and everything. And I was just, like, nonchalantly, like, trying to give her advice. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, whatever. Uh, interestingly, also, uh, this is back before um, she got on SNL, but I worked uh, in a lot of these episodes. Major shout outs to the awesome uh, Melissa Villasenor, uh, who she voices like five different characters. She's like, she's two of the old ladies uh, that, that are at um, uh, uh, Carol's uh, Fitness Dojo. She's, um, oh God, uh, uh, she's uh, Mega Football Baby. She's Droop. She's like a bunch of other guys. She's like so many characters. And she and I were basically like the uh, the utility players, like the cleanup crew for all the other like bit part characters that would show up in these episodes and stuff. And uh, so I was hanging out with her a little bit. And then I, I got pizza with her and Kelly Hawk uh, after we recorded the episode that day. And we were just like talking about life and stuff and hanging out or whatever. And then uh, I, Callie needed to ride home and I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take you back. Sure. Whatever. And then I looked her up on Twitter later and I saw that she had like a bajillion followers. And I was like, oh my God, this chick is like a TV and movie star. I had no idea. <laughs> and, and I felt like such an idiot. I was like, oh, I was just like giving her advice nonchalantly. Not like she was an amateur or something, but like I had the gall to do that because I didn't know who she was, which I guess was maybe a good thing that I wasn't like being 
too arrogant or too like sucking up or whatever but it was just funny that i was like oh how about that <laughs> so she was super cool and of course she's fantastic as uh red action a lot of the other episodes that have aired uh since then uh yeah and then so after that uh was you are rad uh which is one of my favorite episodes uh regardless of my part in it just because I, I thought it was such a fun one um so little fun fact also uh and this was this was all fa- all's fair this lo- all's fair in love and war and voice acting uh originally i was the uh, little pterodactyl guy that goes K-O, K-O, in the beginning of a couple episodes including this one and originally i was trying to do it and i couldn't quite get the voice right exactly so i think ultimately ian ended up filling in uh and doing this sort of K-O, sort of thing with him instead uh, but I remember trying to do some sort of K-O, K-O, like a like an inhaled like Cyberman voice or something like that. It was weird, but whatever. Um, and then uh, I so this this episode of course had the amazing uh, K.O. versus Rad rap uh, done by uh, Courtney and Ian. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, Ian was uh, uh, of, of course I knew Ian for his animation work beforehand with like Knock Force and everything I'd mentioned on the previous Curb blog, but. Uh, yeah, the the rap was awesome, especially if you guys haven't. I, I mean, if, I assume you're listening by this point. You've seen these episodes, but yeah, that that rap was awesome. And of course, that was the first time since Knock Force he had done something like that for uh, for a cartoon, which was really cool to see that. Um, and uh, the only other major thing in this episode was, and this was actually something that established uh, with what I was doing for um, uh, for the arcade. Uh, place in general was I, I apparently I'm, I'm almost always the voices of the uh, arcade machines so there was something happening where uh, KO who was pretending to be rad or just you know convincing himself that he was rad the whole time uh, was uh, you know winning all these games and everything and they, ne- they needed a game announcer and of course you know by that point Smash was you know our religion because this was you know almost two years ago by now we recorded this and, uh, you know, so of, of all I had to do was, uh, you know, KO wins, you know, this game's winner is KO. And, you know, doing my crappy impression of Sandra Mobus's smash announcer, you know. Uh, so shout out to him, of course. Uh, yeah, the rap was recorded later and I didn't get to see it until the finished episode was completed. But uh, it was it was something else that was awesome. Uh, after that was uh, presenting Joe Kappa. Uh, not much to say about this one. This is actually a pretty small session. Uh, uh, Kari Walgren still wasn't there to record Shannon, so I didn't get to meet her. Uh, and Joe Cup, uh, Joe Cuppa, I think actually wasn't even like cast yet, unfortunately. Um, so I, uh, I didn't get to meet him either, but, uh, biggest thing I got to do in this episode, uh, other than just that little, uh, Nick army bit was, uh, I believe I had to improv something with Neil at the very beginning. I think that, uh, the script was like blank with, or not, not blank, but like, I think they just had like the very beginning and then the very end. So I had like a few seconds to just like come up with some random crap. I don't, I have no idea what I said. I can't remember what the specifics were. You'd have to listen really closely to the background <laughs> as uh, he's just monologuing off. And then, okay, my, my merch table is in, the ba- is in the background. And uh, thank you for supporting. Thanks for coming out, everybody, uh, et cetera. So that was it. That was all I really did for that one. Uh, after that was uh, another one of my favorite episodes, uh, Face Your Fears, um, which was uh, a short-lived for me, mostly just uh, little little bits to fill in. But um, with this one, what was fun was uh, I got to do another video game announcer for the, um, the Face Your Fears uh, uh, video game uh, arcade machine that the characters were getting sucked into and everything. Except this time it was more of like a Mortal Kombat inspired sort of like extremely hard, you know, sort of thing. And um, I remember I think that at the time uh, I did something and then I, and then I might have in another session later, I think I might have uh, gone back in and uh, and re-recorded uh, that. Maybe we like added something or changed it or something. I can't remember exactly what it was. Uh, my proudest moment though in that episode was uh, <laughs> Enid's uh, dream sequence uh, or one, one of her uh, thought sequences, I guess, uh, when they were, I think, trying to, uh, uh, to get Rad busted out of his like, you know, face your fears thing. Uh, was when she was thinking about working at the counter, and uh, Perd comes up, and uh, I, I think I forget exactly what it was. It, it wasn't written exactly as how I did it. I think it was like, "Hello, I'm a customer," and then I think I just like turned it into like, "Hello, hi, here I am, a customer," or whatever, and then it became that. And so that that was that was ad libbed by me, but that that turned out pretty good. <laughs> that was one of my favorite moments. Um, but uh, and also, of course. Uh, you know, I, I've gotten to become friends with uh, Ryan Shannon and uh, uh, Parker Simmons and Dave Legree, who I've known before the show uh, uh, as uh, some of the major board artists on the series and everything. And uh, Dave did this episode and worked in a lovely little uh, Super Mario RPG and Chrono Trigger references, uh, both of those kind of scattered throughout. 
Uh, you can see them, you know, around where they are. They're they're easy to spot, and they make me very happy when I see things like that mixed in there. So, um, after this one was uh, stop attacking the plaza. Uh, this is where I got to finally work uh, ensemble for the first time with Robbie Damon, who got the part of Raymond by that point. And uh, Robbie's great, of course. He and I have been in a whole bunch of things together, even well before he was TV's Robbie Damon. Uh, I actually just saw him earlier today before I was recording on, uh, on something. And uh, actually, he, a little shout out. He just did a, a recent vlog on his YouTube channel uh, in uh, when he was going to NYC, Anime NYC, when we did the big Sailor Moon thing together and everything. But... Um, yeah, I got to work with him, and uh, we recorded a bunch of the uh, robot characters together and everything. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Shannon still wasn't there. I still didn't get to meet Kari Walgren like, throughout that whole season, sadly. Um, but uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, most amount of dialogue that I had thus far uh, with uh, Ernesto. Uh, best thing about this one, though, easily is just getting to watch Jim Cummings be amazing as Lord Boxman. I, I, I remember, uh, oh yeah, I never think, I think I never like said this but uh, in the previous one, but Watching Jim Cummings perform, especially as a character like Lord, uh, Lord Boxman, who was practically like created for him, like he's he's just so tailor fit for his, uh, you know, his his manner of acting. As far as I'm concerned, watching him perform in a session is like watching an open portal into the '90s, because <laughs> he just does all like the crazy like sounds and you know he does all the the over the top and subtlety like up, like highs and lows and crazy stuff. Like he's just so known for doing on all of his like really iconic cartoon characters and, 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 and things like from Disney and Nick and Cartoon Network previous shows and things. And yeah, it's, it, it just, just, it, just that in and of itself is a huge, huge treat for me. Uh, so that was, that was awesome. I to just be there for that one, you know, other than, other than just, you know, Ernesto actually having lines. <laughs> um, after this one, uh, of course people, you know, plenty of people heard about this one was the power is yours, which is the, uh, uh, Captain Planet episode uh, crossover, which uh, really came as a massive, massive surprise to people. I think uh, of all the, um, you know, other, uh, not even just Cartoon Network, but Turner uh, properties that the show could have crossed over with, I do not think that people were expecting Captain Planet. And yet, it was so perfect uh, for how the show was and everything. Um, you know, really, as uh, as far as my direct involvement went, it was, it was mainly just... Um, uh, my uh, one one or two lines as Ernesto, and I think in the beginning of the of the episode. Uh, but the cool thing was, uh, I actually got to scratch audio uh, for Kwame. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that means, uh, basically, I've been talking about how in these previous episodes, uh, some people weren't there uh, or would record their lines later, etc. Um, if we're all having to do uh, like the full run of the episode, sometimes like if somebody wasn't there, another actor will fill in on their lines. Like for instance, the uh, Joe Cuppa episode. Joe Cuppa wasn't cast yet, so like Ian would scratch. Uh, he like he would perform the the lines for Joe Cuppa, like just doing his own thing uh, as just like placeholder audio. That's what they call scratch audio for that. Uh, so because uh, I think that before that, uh, David Coburn, who is the voice of uh, Captain Planet, I think was recorded the day before that. Uh, so I did not get to meet him. We were, we were not recording together, unfortunately. Um, but I, uh, I, but also uh, uh, LeVar Burton was going to record for Kwame, I believe, the day after that. Uh, so I filled in for Kwame and did all of his lines and everything with my really crappy, with my really crappy impression of Kwame. I'm, I'm a, a hero who fights for whatever, <laughs> you know embarrassing but that was fun just getting to be there for that and of course um you know doing some of the uh in between stuff with like the go planet and all that uh and also funnily enough um courtney taylor similarly did some scratch audio for uh, dr blight because uh, she was not cast yet i don't think that uh, meg ryan uh, was able to come back so the uh, there was a different actress that came in and uh, played the character for the final episode but uh, yeah i have watched that episode so many times i would look over the uh, the storyboards that Dave Allegri did so often, like dreaming of how it was going to look in the finished animation. And the the ending in particular with like that old school, like Deke style, uh, like, like I, don't, I don't even want to say crappy animation, just like that animation style, like it worked so well. It was awesome. Uh, so that that's one that is a, is a big favorite just because it was just so ridiculous and amazing. Um, but uh, yeah, and, 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 and unexpected as well. But yeah. Uh, let's see. Then after that, uh, getting close to the end of the list here, was uh, OK Dendy, Let's Be KO. Um, this was the first time I got to work with and meet uh, Melissa Fawn, who, of course, is the voice of Dendy. And a lot of fans know her as uh, uh, 
uh, uh, oh God, uh, Ga uh, Gaz, thank you, sorry, Gaz from uh, uh, Invader Zim, and of course, uh, Edward from Cowboy Bebop, other such things. She is adorable and lovely. And we bounded a little bit. We found out apparently we, uh, we grew up in the same hometown from Long Island, uh, her and, the, and, and her uh, other brothers of voice actor stuff in, in anime, uh, Jonathan Fawn and Tom Fawn are, are New Yorkers like myself, apparently. Yeah, this was the first time I actually got to hear Dendi, I, th I think. Uh, yeah, you know what? Because I think that the first, I, if I'm remembering right, the, the timeline is phasing out a little bit. I think that maybe the first shorts that Dendi was in hadn't quite come out yet. So I think that it was the first time I was experiencing Dendi as a character, uh, or, or rather like hearing her voice. I'd seen her in the storyboards of, of other past episodes and stuff. But nonetheless, a uh, big thing for me in this one was uh, Ernesto finally got some time to really shine. Uh, got a whole cool fight scene to himself. And uh, uh, Vert Jake Kaufman, who I've uh, gotten to know a little bit uh, over Twitter recently, uh, did some awesome, awesome, like kind of uh, electro swing uh, sort of BGM for him. And just getting to be like really big and over the top and ridiculous on uh, that one was a lot of fun. Uh, I've got, without giving away too much about future episodes, I've, I've gotten to do a lot more fun Ernesto stuff now that he's, uh, he gets, you know, we've established his, his character a little bit more, I, I think. And, uh, yeah, this was, this was a nice sort of, uh, developmental thing for him in particular, um, with just, like, his interactions with Dendi and everything. I feel like he and Dendi are kind of the closest things to, like, being rival equivalents, because you think about it, like, in a way, like, each of the different robot characters sort of have, like, their own sort of equivalent rival uh, in the good guy team, and I feel like Dendi and Ernesto sort of have that uh, dynamic with each other in a way. But, uh, yeah, last but certainly not least, uh, this episode just very recently uh, came out uh, was, of course, Let's Not Be Skeletons, um, the musical episode that is basically about gun control. <laughs> Um, I don't want to dwell too much on the, I mean, I don't want to even say controversy because it wasn't a controversial uh, episode in terms of like what it sparked, I think. Um, you know, it's not getting like, it's not getting like heat from people. People seem to really like it a lot, uh, but I don't want to dwell too much on like the kind of, you know, darker things about it because I, you know, there, there's fun stuff to be said. So I'll, I'll, I'll stick to that specifically. Um, so Parker Simmons, um, who I had worked with on a uh, previous episode, he did some uh, some other voices with us, and uh, one of the other ones I forget which one, uh, who's been boarding on the boarding on the show for a long time. Of course, uh, he's a great guy. He also uh, I think I gave him a shout out on one of the uh, uh, one of the uh, streams I was doing where he was the creator of the Shamrock Shake cartoon, uh, which I am a huge fan of as well. So he's awesome, and uh, he was extremely kind as to put a few of my characters in this particular episode. Uh, but uh, Neil uh, had a surprising amount of lines in this one, uh, which was a lot of fun. And uh, so I got to like be really rageful and insane and ridiculous with, uh, <laughs> with Neil. And uh, so a little, little fun thing about uh, when KO is looking around and everybody have the, the, has the skeleton remotes and they're all like, you know, blasting each other with them and everything. Um, there's a, uh, a part, it's right after, uh, Crinkly Wrinkly, um, accidentally skeletonizes himself. Um, then, uh, Ernesto is, uh, being chased by Neil and they just, like, you know, run past him or whatever. Uh, I, I add a little quick line for Ernesto and you can hear the remnants of what Neil is saying. Uh, he's saying, take this! Uh, originally I, and I think I only did it this long because I thought that, like, it was going to be kind of, like, mixed in the background, like, amidst a whole bunch of other things. But originally, I did have him going, it's no use, take this, and was hoping that it would make the cut, but I understand why it didn't, because it was just so quick of a moment as they're just, like, kind of rushing past the screen super quick uh, that it didn't quite work with that. But, uh, yeah, and that dramatic stuff at the very end <laughs> with, uh, you know, that just do it already was, you know, it was messed up, but it was, it was a lot of fun just getting to do that in the first place. <laughs> Um, and then, of course, we have the songs, uh, which uh, Parker and uh, one of his partners uh, came up with. So they actually sent us um, not only uh, test MP3s of them, but also the animatic. So we actually got footage of uh, what the storyboards were like in motion uh, while the test version of the song was playing. It was just Parker doing all the voices himself. And um, so, so that, that was cool, and we got to have a little bit of a preview of that. Um, I had two difficult challenges. Uh, one, I, I was the, <laughs> the soloist where the, the part where, uh, Gil Ferris calls in the, um, uh, the choir, uh, which I'll get to that too. But I was the soloist, the little bunny guy who's got, who's like skeleton remote. And that took like five or six different takes. And I was so like, 
I, like when I wasn't recording, it was one of those things where like, oh, when I'm not trying, I got it right. Like when I was at home practicing, I got it right and it was, it was perfect. I was like, yes. And then like when I go in to record it, I, I can't do it. I'm like, damn it. You know, so that was a little frustrating, but I didn't feel as bad because um, basically everybody else in the the studio was, I think, I, I don't want to speak for anybody, but everybody seemed like they were equally like as kind of nervous about doing all the performance and everything. Courtney was awesome. She kicked so much ass with the um, uh, the second song later in the episode, the KO sings, which was so adorable. Um, and of course, we all did like the, we all had to do the the chorus parts with the no way and all that. And then in the first song as well, uh, we had to do the um, the choir coming in for the skeleton remote, skeleton remote. And uh, we we had to do, I think like, four or five different tracks of harmonies. So we we had to hear the test track and then like repeat like skeleton remote, skeleton remote, like five different times in different like keys and pitches or whatever. Uh, and it, so it was it was me, Parker, Courtney, Ashley, Ian, and uh, Kate Flannery, who's the voice of Carol, of course, uh, of Office fame, who's fantastic. Actually, a little funny story about that too, when Carol has that little solo part in the second song where it's like with all these... Uh, what is it? Um, oh, with all these fools running wild, Gene, and I've been reduced to this. Uh, originally, I think it was meant to be a little bit more like like uh, talk singing. Uh, but Kate was like, "Can I just like do it like like a full on singing version of it?" And then like she got it perfectly, and they were like, "You know what? We like that more." <laughs> so she was great. Um, but uh, yeah, so the harmony part was hilarious and ridiculous. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that that was just an absolute treat getting to be part of that episode uh, and. I felt like such an idiot because this, what does this say about me? I didn't actually get the message of it until like we went in to record it. Like I, I, I didn't realize until I was going in like, Oh, I just got like the whole like point of this episode. <laughs> and I think it was really clever. I know, I know it's very like silly, but I think it was very clever. I, a lot of people seem to really enjoy it and I've really resonated with it a lot, uh, which I think is great. It's funny. It's catchy. It's memorable. It's got some really cool, like dark moments in it. Surprisingly, uh, yeah, so it's, it's thus far, it's my favorite episode that I've worked on, and it's my favorite episode of the show. But that said, uh, of course, you know, I've been enjoying watching the show just, again, as a, as a viewer. Uh, recently, in, in the last batch of, like, five episodes that just went up, uh, another one of my favorites, like, without question, is the uh, Hope This Flies episode, which is basically like a, like a whole Mario Kart parody, complete with some, like, SNES sort of uh, music that Vert did. It's so good. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, I, I've been really enjoying the show. Uh, I don't know much about the season finale. Uh, of course, we've had some, some hints with, uh, you know, this mysterious creation of, uh, Lord Boxman that's, uh, perhaps maybe showing up soon. We'll see. Um, but, uh, yeah, we've, we've, we've been recording for season two and there's a lot of episodes coming up that I'm really excited for people to see. Uh, I can't give away anything about them, but I've, I've had a lot of fun stuff with my characters that I've been doing and even, even some new stuff as well. So, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's still incredible to me. It's been now over two years since I started on this and like already season one, like aired so quickly, all these like really awesome episodes. And so far it, it seems like people seem to love the show, uh, and are really, really digging it. So I, I hope it continues for a long time to come. Uh, I've actually got another episode that I'll be recording, uh, the week before I go to GDC. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Uh, I don't know what I'm in for just yet, but, uh, it's just, it is always like, I guess just kind of like wrap this up. It is such a, 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 an absolute joy. Every single time I get to go in and do this show, it's, it's a complete honor. Like, just getting to be part of a show that, like I said before, I would be a fan of this even if I wasn't in it. Um, you know, and then, like, getting to work with these incredible actors uh, that, like, a lot of which that, like, I'm a fan of or, like, I've become a fan of after seeing how amazing they are and everything and, like, you know, I've gotten to become pretty cool with some of them, and I, and then even when I when I get the chance, like I'll I'll go over to Cartoon Network, uh, well, rather I'll go over to the animation section of the Cartoon Network building, and like I'll visit the board artists and say hi to folks and everything, and uh, you know I'll try to get some sneak peeks of episodes and you know what everybody's up to these days and etc. But yeah, it's been amazing. Uh, it's been a, a incredible last couple of years. This whole journey of everything happening with the show and. Uh, you know, I, uh, I really hope it continues onward for a long time. I hope people really, really love it. And, uh, you know, onwards and upwards from here. And I hope people are looking forward to uh, the next season as well after uh, season one wraps up. So that's, uh, that's going to do it. So um, I guess one last little plug, by the way, because uh, this, this, I'm recording this a couple days ahead of time. But this is going to be going up on uh, Saturday, March 3rd. Um, 
perhaps uh, those of you who are, you know, able to watch Cartoon Network and can check out uh, Adult Swim tonight. I won't say what, but uh, you should uh, tune into some of the anime stuff that's uh, airing on Toonami tonight because uh, mayhaps you'll be hearing me in another show on Cartoon Network today. That's all I'll say. Uh, but you'll be, you know, you'll, you'll be getting an official announcement, you know, from me probably later tonight uh, by the time it airs. So look forward to that. Maybe you'll have some guesses. Who knows? But nonetheless, uh, thanks everybody for listening. Uh, please, in the comments below, let me know of your favorite episodes of OKKO okay, Let's Be Heroes, uh, regardless of they, if they were on this list or if I worked on them or not. Uh, let me know favorite episodes, favorite characters, favorite moments. Uh, and again, I mean, if you've made it this far, I don't know how you haven't. If you haven't seen the show, uh, please check it out. Uh, it's I'll, I'll even p uh, pull it, put another link in the description for like where you can watch episodes and stuff for free on the official Cartoon Network website, the Cartoon Network app. I am not sponsored. I swear to God, I just really love this show a lot, and I want people to continue to enjoy it and watch it if they haven't seen it yet. But that's going to do it. So uh, thanks, everybody. I will probably be getting back to streaming again next week. Uh, I've got a few other things to take care of. But uh, that's going to do it for now, and I'll catch you on the next one. And, uh, you know, it's only magic. But isn't it amazing when you know?